Hey there, today I wanna to talk about the differences between being a game programmer and being a game designer. There's a lot to it, and it's stuff that I didn't really understand before I got into game development, and stuff that I think that people really kind of need to understand. If it's something that you're interested in, if you've thought like, hey, I wanna make video games one day, you really do need to know the difference, that way you have an idea of what path to choose and what things to focus on. But before we get into the video, I want to remind you that now is your last chance to get your hands on the Ultimate Game Dev Bundle. The offer ends in just three days on July 31st, and I don't know if we'll ever make it available again. If you've ever thought about creating and releasing your own game, this course will teach you everything you need to know from start to finish. My courses will teach you how to build a game from scratch and how to work in Unity on a professional level, and my good friend Thomas Brush will then teach you how to polish your games with some great art tutorials, and finally, teach you everything on how to successfully release your game, market it, work with publishers, get into crowdfunding, and tons more. We've gathered our 30 years of combined experience into one massive course bundle at a very low price, where you'll get to build just about every game type there is from scratch, so when you're done, you'll also have a great portfolio to take the next step in your game development career. Already over 100 students have enrolled in the Ultimate Game Dev course, and combined over 3,500 students have joined our communities and started their game development journey. You'll get access to two exclusive Discord channels with fellow developers and professionals, and with my courses, you'll have direct access to me in case you run into any problems along the way. Again, the Ultimate Game Dev course is only live for three more days, and these last few days, we're even including an exclusive free Ultimate Game Dev mug. So if this sounds interesting, go check it out by simply clicking the link in the description and grab a seat before it's too late or they run out. First, let's just break down really quickly what the two jobs do or what the key differences are. A game designer's real job is to design the game. Now, the design of the game includes a lot of stuff. The core idea, like the concept of it, the story of the game, the characters in the game, the way that the game is balanced, how the interactions work, all of that stuff, the items, the, all, all of the parts of the game that make up an actual game. Their job is to design that, which could be on paper, on a computer, in some system or software, or whatever it is that they're using at their company, but it's also to implement that stuff. Now, when it comes to implementing, that's where they kind of mix in with the programmers, because a game designer doesn't write code. They don't create new components in Unity, they don't go writing complex systems, or even really designing and building big systems. Instead, they kind of come up with the high level of stuff, and then they give it to the programmers to start writing the code. And a game programmer's job is to really do that, to write the code, to translate the game designer's ideas into something that executes on a computer, just runs, works, and is playable. Now, there's still more to it than that because a game designer doesn't just come up with ideas, shove them off to the programmer, and then have the programmer put them in. That was the way it was a very, very, very long time ago. Nowadays, so we give our designers tools and we make it so that designers can implement a lot of stuff on their own. So we give them kind of the core building blocks. Think of it like we're giving them a whole bunch of Legos. And then they take those Legos and they start to build up a game or build up parts of a game. And then when they need a spaceship that flies around, we build that kind of pre-built component or that pre-built set of code to handle that and then give them that and they start hooking up spaceships and modifying and customizing those. The game programmer's job is really to solve the problems that make it so that the computer can do what the game designer has come up with. Now, being able to do that gives you a lot of power. And I mean, that's one of the reasons that I really recommend people be a game programmer because you end up with a lot of power. You can just make a game out of nothing. But it also has a side effect of a lot of the times people will abuse that power. Game programmers who don't like a specific thing about a game design will just go and change it or they won't implement it or they'll implement it in their own custom way or argue against that game design idea saying, hey, I don't think we should do this, we should do something else, or that's a waste of time, that's gonna take too long, or whatever. And I understand, it's kind of human nature. You're a game developer, you're a game programmer that is into games, and you've got lots of ideas, and it could be possible that your ideas are just right. I mean, sometimes game programmers do have great game design ideas as well. But it's important to make sure that when you're dealing with these problems that you address them right because there's a lot of bad ways to do this a lot of terrible things that you could do like you know not doing the systems or just completely changing it without saying anything and then there are other alternatives or other things to really think about first is just that 
You've got to remember that when you're getting a system from a game designer, at most companies of any size, that game designer's already gone through plenty of other people. They've talked to a lot of other designers. They've sold their idea to their management, their coworkers, and other people around them way before they've gone over to the programming team and started talking to them. Not always. Sometimes it's a little bit mixed up, but most of the time that's the case. That The design has already been kind of vetted out and they've had to argue for it many, many times. And you bringing stuff up and arguing against it could just be repetitive. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't say anything though. What you need to do is ask questions instead of attacking them. If you've got questions about why they're doing something or you think that something's not right, just go in with those questions. Be honestly and sincerely interested and curious about it. Find out what it is that they're trying to accomplish, why they're trying to accomplish it the way that they're trying to accomplish it that way, and maybe offer some solutions. Ask them if they had considered some other things because this is really the core job of a game programmer to make sure that whatever system you're putting in, you put in in an optimal way. And a lot of the time when game designers come in with these ideas, they've got a whole idea for like, we need a big giant system to handle this thing and some new thing, or we need a whole giant, you know, whatever it is, a big thing. It happens all the time. Some big system that they need for some little game thing. And you realize that, hey, maybe there's an alternative. Maybe there's something that we already have they could just be modified a tiny bit and reused, but they don't realize that that's an option. So it's important to just keep an eye out for those kinds of things too and recommend them, especially if that's the kind of concern or issue that you have is that you're just creating too many new systems for all of these different sub parts of your game or your games. Then you know, see if there's ways that you can offer up to reuse or make that easier or just make their job easier. And if you can't come to a resolution and you're the game programmer, it's important to just remember to let them do their job because their job is to do the game design. Your job is to make that game design into a game. Their job is to do the actual designing, coming up with the systems and figuring out how those are going to kind of work or how the game is going to use those systems to be a fun game. And if you don't let them do their job, then really you're just taking on another job for no reason. And I mean, imagine if they were coming in, looking at your code and going, hey, we really should change this. We need to switch frameworks. We need to change game engines. We need to switch networking stacks or whatever other thing that they think that they need to change out because, hey, they kind of like programming a little bit too. You do whatever your job is, focus a lot on that, and then really try to do the best that you can to help the rest of your team and let them do their job as good as possible or help them to do their job as good as possible. I guess that's really just the best advice I've got. Now, as for which one you should pick for what job you want to do, it really just comes down to what you want your day-to-day -day life to be like. Do you want to sit around creating game designs or do you want to sit around writing game code? When you're writing game code, it's a lot of problem solving and decision making at an architectural level figuring out like how to how to tie different things together how to make different things work a lot of searching researching and just learning constantly on how to how to make a game system for the different types of things that you need or how to solve the problems that you have and then implementing that it has the extra benefit of you come up with an idea and once you've got a little bit of experience though you can just drop in and start making your game and make it work now, a game designer, on the other hand, isn't necessarily going to be able to do that. Sometimes they will, like that. Sometimes they'll learn how to do a little bit of code, but most of the time they won't be able to just make their own game from scratch. But they spend their day to day just figuring out what makes a game fun, learning more about games. Their learning is a lot more you know, experimentation experimenting with their own games, experimenting with other games, and seeing what things are out there. If you really want to be a game designer, I would say it's important that you love playing games and that you love playing a big variety of games. If you want to be a game programmer, it's important that you love solving problems and kind of figuring out puzzles, and you also like video games. Uh, I don't know if this is helpful. I, I hope that it is because it's something that people ask about a lot. So if it's something that you like, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and all that, and leave a comment down below if you have some thoughts on this. I'm curious to know what everybody else is thinking about, you know, just game design versus programming. What one are you interested in? What one are you doing? And did I miss anything in the, in the big differences? I don't think I did. I think I kind of hit them all, but I guess we'll see. Also, don't forget to check out the Ultimate Game Dev course. It's only available for three more days until July 31st, so if it sounds interesting to you, 
Make sure to grab a seat before the offer ends and get a free exclusive Ultimate Game Dev mug as well. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, I'll finish up the outro.